I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick, natural resource specialist at the Oxford Club. His website, EnergyAndResourcesDigest.com. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on. I know we don't usually talk politics when we do business, but... It looks like the FBI clearing Hillary in the latest email scandal has really influenced the gold market. Yeah, it uh, sent gold uh, sliding lower because apparently some fools bought gold um, expecting gold would go higher because Trump won. I think gold's going higher in any case. I don't think it matters who's in office. Maybe Trump could have, um, uh, with his brash actions, uh, maybe frightened the market a little more, so sent gold higher faster. Maybe that's what people were anticipating. But there are a lot of other forces out there that are converging on gold. And so this pullback is a buying opportunity, in my opinion. Um, and uh, also, we were trying to get up through the 200-day moving average, you know, if you look at it on a chart. And those kind of battles don't go in one go. You know, I mean, it takes some time to get through those things because that's why last week when when I was writing to my subscribers and on Twitter, I was saying, do you think we're going to get through the 200-day in one go or do you think we're going to pop above and then have a pullback? Well, no surprise, they have a pullback. So, you know, this is the thing we kind of have to work out. But the big trends are there. And we are seeing a lot of buying pickup in India. It's a huge market for for gold. Um, the buying in China could be stronger, but I'm not especially disappointed by that. As long as, as the central banks keep buying hand over fist, and they are, you know, things should go well. And gold production is supposed to fall this year, you know, year over year, which means we'll have less supply. That's naturally supportive for the price of gold. So this kind of pullback doesn't really worry me that much. I start looking for opportunities, frankly. Well, so many analysts had said, you know, gold did have a great run up through most of the year. There should be a pause and a decline, and frankly, a, a nice little V dip is a good time to invest in it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to get back to your thing on on the FBI, the reason so many people were outraged by that is it turned out to be nothing. And in the meantime, twenty million people in a, in the United States voted while they thought that Hillary was about to be indicted. So it does look like the FBI is playing. Uh, games with the election, you know, uh, or at least you could certainly interpret it that way. And uh, first they made the charge and upset some people. Now they've withdrawn the charge and upset other people. It's really kind of a black uh, mark on the FBI. We'll have to see how that plays out. But this goes back to my theory that the U.S. government is destabilizing. As the U.S. government destabilizes, then we'll see more interesting gold. It sounds like this head of the FBI is kind of a loose cannon. How does he keep his job? Yeah, well, I'm sure they won't fire him until the election, or maybe when with the next administration. I was just reading an an, an uh, article by a former coworker, of his, and the coworker said, you know, Comey is full of himself. He always has been, and it's always about him. So uh, maybe this was uh, some kind of thing like that. This, guy who thought he could be the center of the story, and he sees on something to do that. We don't know what he's thinking. We don't know what is in his head. It did give the gold markets a jolt um, and maybe distracted from the other more positive things going on there. But again, we peaked over the 200-day moving average last week. Um, a pullback now is not unusual because it takes time to get to a big average like that. But pullbacks can be bought, and there are a lot of other trends that are really pushing it higher. For example, uh, when we have a chance today, let's talk about Sharia gold and how that's going to affect the market. Right. What is Sharia gold and what should we be looking for? 
Well, um, even though in the Middle East gold is extremely is extremely popular, it's only physical gold. People don't do things like trade gold futures or invest in, uh, say, gold mining stocks, or at least not many of them, if they're devout Muslims, because devout Muslims have a problem with, like, receiving interest and uh, things like speculation. Those are all prohibited. So uh, what the World Gold Council has done is, is worked with a, uh Islamic group to come up with Sharia-compliant gold, you know, and just the rules for the financial instruments that will actually make them work. And so uh, those, that should be cleared um, December 6th. They had an announcement about it yesterday that didn't really say much. But um, but uh, we should start to see some of that activity after December 6th. Now, it won't be immediate, and it, and it won't be right away, but it could become steady. And, I mean, just think about how much wealth there is flowing around in the Islamic markets. And it's the Islamic fundamentalists that we're actually talking about, those who, those who don't want to have bank accounts because they, uh, they might receive interest. But at the same time, they have the same hopes and fears we all do. And if they have investments, then they probably would like to own more gold as a, like, carpenter again bad times, right? And so this would be an easier way for them to hold gold without having to put a vault in the house and stuff like that. So I think we could see much more demand from that. The World Gold Council really thinks so. They've been uh, really talking up how much effect this could actually have on the on the world gold markets because it's a tight market now. It really is. And so it won't take much to push the gold price higher. So Maybe in later December, maybe sometime early next year, but we should start to see the effect of that, start to see that upward pressure in the market. And that would be quite interesting. Was it panic buying or whatever? The Dow going up more than 300 points, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon stocks flying out the door. Did people go and buy a bunch of overpriced stock that's going to lose a lot of value, perhaps in a short time? Well, that depends on if you believe our friends, See, I didn't make any pronouncement on this last week, but I uh, followed some people who said what we saw yesterday was the beginning of a real decline for the broad markets. And if they're right, and we're in a market decline, one thing you have to remember is that when there is a big trend, the corrections to that trend are often sharp, very sharp. And so uh, if I was to tell you that uh, as we speak right now, the NASDAQ has gained 2.9% this year, and 2.4% of it was today. You might understand that that's actually quite a sharp move. It depends on if they have follow-through. And I mean, like, more than a week of follow-through. They had nine days down, right? So they have to have some good follow-through for this to actually be worth it. But on the bullish case, we have to understand that Donald Trump, excuse me, that Mr. Trump, upsets a lot of people on Wall Street, mainly because they don't know what he'll do. And so for them, Hillary is quite predictable. And so when they look at that and, like, they say, well, if she's in office, we can invest this, this, and this, those who have been holding cash back on the sidelines do go and invest that money. And so uh, we are speaking on a Monday, which uh, means that uh, the election is Tuesday. By the time people listen to this, they might know what the results of the election are. Certainly, most markets, I'm speaking about places where they make bets and like stuff like that, are pricing in a Hillary victory, and I generally tend to go with the odds. If there's a surprise, if, say, Donald Trump pulls a Brexit, you're going to see a sharp reversal in many, many things. So, um, you know, there's no problem with waiting and see how things go until after the election. No one has to be a hero here, I don't believe. Just wait, see what happens, and then you can make your bet, your bets accordingly because there will be longer-term trends that are falling in place at that time. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after the break. 
Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, the price of oil, uh, again, a little bump today because the Russians say they may be on board with a production freeze. We keep getting this little mantra now, it seems, from every country that produces oil. Oh, we'd be in on a production freeze, and then it just fizzles away. Is this more just perhaps we'll be there? Well, um, I am investing in the energy markets right now, but... Uh while I own a couple oil producers, I'm not buying any new ones. And um, I prefer oil services uh, for a reason that I'll get to in just a, a little bit. But we saw a big swing in the oil markets. First, they went up on the news that OPEC might actually do this uh, production freeze and have Russia on board. And then they went way, way down. Because as it turns out, Iraq and Iran say this deal does not apply to us. And Libya seems to have that inclination itself. And Nigeria is telling everyone to back off. You put those things together, it's very hard to enforce this agreement when, you know, four big producers are saying that the rules don't apply to them. Whether it actually works out or not, um, I think we're going to have a surplus of oil on the markets for a while. But this is also a very volatile market. Things go wrong all the time. You know, I mean, the... Uh, chaos that is pretty much Iraq could spread. You know, we could see uh, more fighting spreading around that area. Um, and uh, Nigeria is always on the brink of civil war. So things could go wrong there that would boost things. But one thing we have seen is since a little stability has crept into the market, um, North American-based oil producers have who, who have been cutting costs like crazy. There's a lot of new tech that's a much longer story and all this, but many of them can make a profit at like recent prices. It's actually not bad for them. So they've been bringing things back online. And especially since um, many of these wells were drilled, just not tapped, and so it's not that much effort to actually bring them into play. I mean, there's a lot of potential for more production there. And so I think that the oil services are really the way to play it, because we're starting to see that business uptick and um, organizations, uh, that is to say industry organizations in both Canada and the U.S. says this is the bottom for the oil services sector. And so, you know, if you, you want to look at something, look in those areas. There are great names there that can actually do very well. Yeah, um, but, you know, I mean, at the same time, uh, there is just so much chaos in this market. You just really have to have an iron gut to ride these things out. So, you know, buy those pullbacks. We're having a pullback right now. Ride them up. You should do pretty well. Natural gas. I'm actually more bullish on natural gas than I am on oil. And one thing that I would like to point out is that um, U.S. oil exports, they just hit a new high. We are exporting a lot of oil now. And that's not only export, uh, that's not only oil pumped in the U.S., it's also oil pumped in Canada that gets sent to pipelines down south to us. So, um, that might put some uh, price support under the price of oil in North America anyway. And so uh, that's another good thing going on. What about this new propaganda? I remember just recently they're saying natural gas is evil. It's a greenhouse gas. So what if it replaces coal? Well, I've seen uh, Newport Industries in Vancouver that uses 90% natural gas, 10% diesel to power big trucks. There's no smoke coming out of that smokestack whatsoever. Right. So well, how some, come all of a sudden natural gas is evil? Because some people get upset about anything. <laughs> you know, really. I mean, uh, let's face it. Uh, yes, you can make a case about all the stuff. And, you know, fracking is harmful to the environment in the places where it's done incorrectly. So I can see their point there. But really, natural gas is one of the cleaner fuels. And it doesn't leave a 10,000-year death pile like nuclear power does, which is another cleaner fuel, you know? With every fuel, you have 
trade-offs. You have things that um, are good, things that are bad. People talk about electric cars as being the cure for everything. You know, there are ways to mine lithium that aren't exactly environmental friendly. Some are friendlier than others. So um, everything is a trade-off. I'm actually a big fan of, like, natural gas, and uh, I think people should take a chill pill and uh, look at the opportunities in that sector. I think there are some things in natural gas that look uh, quite attractive right now. Lithium, you just mentioned. How is that going to do? Is there enough lithium if everybody goes to electric cars? Well, lithium is one of the most common elements in the universe. Uh, it's uh, one of the three elements created during the Big Bang, uh, or I should say the three common elements created during the Big Bang. And so, sure, I mean, um, there is plenty of lithium around, but the question is, is there enough lithium around at uh, prices that uh, are economically viable? That's always the question. Now, there are new lines, uh, excuse me, there are new mines coming online. I just uh, sent my subscribers a list of them to my Golden Resource Profit Hunter subscribers, and I, and I also made that list available at the New Orleans uh, Investment Conference. So the new mines coming online, um, are some are quite prolific, and we might see a surplus of lithium in, uh, in uh, 2018, maybe 2019. Then again, uh, it seems like the demand figures keep getting ratcheted up because it's an extremely useful mineral. Uh, it's, and it's not just for batteries. It's for all sorts of things. It uses it in paints, medicines, you name it. So um, there's that. And one thing you have to remember is lithium isn't the only thing in a lithium battery. In fact, it's a very small component of a lithium battery. Other things like nickel and aluminum and stuff like that, those are much bigger in a lithium battery. And uh, some things are, you know, much more rare than others. So... It's a market where I think you can really make some profits. And yes, you can make a profit on lithium. You just have to pick the right company. I think that we could go into surplus, but I don't think the surplus will last long. And if we do go into that surplus, as I think we will, people will already be looking beyond that to what comes next. And what comes next is a real ramp up in demand that supply will have trouble meeting, at least for five years or so. What happens when you have more demand than supply? There has to be a price adjustment. So, yeah, I think some companies can do very well here. But I'm always surprised about uh, electric car production is none of the production cars have built-in solar panels. Why not? Well, um, that's right. There are uh, many that have been pulled out, but they're really only built by hobbyists or by people trying to prove a point that do have solar panels. But they haven't incorporated that yet. That's probably like a step or two down the road. Now, um, Elon Musk just came out with his roof panels that, that that actually provide solar power, or I should say they soak up the sun and they turn that into power. And so that's another next step there, you know. Um, and and, and uh, those have been around for a while, but these are the first ones, I think, that were made by a major company like that. So um, it's like one step along. People have to remember that new technology does not happen overnight. You know, uh, I think you and I have talked before about how existing battery tech hasn't kept up with the advancements that we're seeing in the electric grid and in electric power generally. There is new battery tech out there. It's been out there for at least 10 years, and just because of the problems of, ap of actually implementing a brand new technology, you know, I mean, it just hasn't made it to market yet. So, uh, so... These things will come. It'll take time. It's not going to be overnight for anything, you know. Uh, so uh, people just have to um, hold the horses a little bit. But, you know, the great thing is when we have a bumpy road, which is what we're going to have, you can buy those dips and uh, things could actually work out well. Sean, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks, as always. It's always good to talk to you, my friend. My guest has been Sean Broderick, Natural Resource Specialist at the Oxford Club. His website energyandresourcesdigest.com You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. 
comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.